All right, today we are going to talk about language registers. Now, we I gave you a lesson on this last week. Hopefully you learned something, maybe you didn't. What do you know about language registers? I forgot. Um, this is actually a different lesson. It's like, isn't it like how you talk to people? Okay, it is to a certain degree how you talk to people. That's what you were interrupting me for? Yeah. All right, so here, let me give you an example. A wife asks her husband to sign a birthday card, right? Like, honey, our son's got a birthday, so I've signed this card for him, right? Or I ask the President of the United States for his autograph. Or Australia asks the U.S. to sign a treaty to reduce carbon emissions, okay? All of these things might happen to Joe Biden during the course of a day, right? But... How his wife talks to him as his spouse is going to be different than how I talk to him as a citizen to the President of the United States, okay? And how one government talks to the other is going to be different as well. At the end of the day, they're all asking the same man to do the same thing, but when his wife, when Jill says that she can just be, Joe, honey, sign this for me, right? Maybe doesn't need please and thank you, doesn't need any stuff, but he just, he just needs a signature so she can drop the card in the mail, right? But if I'm going to ask Joe Biden for a signature, then there's going to be, Mr. President, I'm so sorry to disturb you, but it would mean a lot if you would sign this for me, please, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use his title. I'm going to be a lot more formal. Lots more please and thank you, okay? And if Australia is asking him to sign, you know, some sort of treaty, that's a 300-page document, <laughs> right? It's, you know, like all of this rules and stuff like that, but that's a very formal thing. But at the end of the day, all, we're all asking him to do the same thing, but how we ask is going to depend on our relationship with him, right? So that's what language register is about. So register is a form of language used for a particular purpose or in a particular setting, okay? Where we are in our relationship with each other is going to dictate how we talk to each other. And this is true in any language. I mean, I'm, we're kind of talking about this in English today, but this counts in Spanish, ASL, French, whatever. So the context or the situation that we're in is going to influence the choice of words that we use and our intonation and inflection, right? Your mother said, don't take that tone with me, child, right? Okay, that's what we mean by intonation. <clears throat> so there are five... Language registers, okay? So we're gonna, well, there are five major language registers. You could argue that there are more, but we're gonna talk about the five major ones today. The first one is frozen text. Frozen text, that is, it's frozen because it never changes. It's like stuck in the snow and it doesn't go anywhere, okay? Things like quotations from the Bible, um, sayings that we use, you know, like a stitch in time saves nine. That's one of those aphorisms that we use that doesn't change. Okay, and what that means is, like, say I had a split, say the seam in my blouse split. If I can, if, if I, I make one stitch when I see the hole in it, that's going to save me from sewing it halfway up my sleeve later, right? If I can grab it in time. So it's the idea of take care of it when it's a small problem and it won't become a big problem. Okay, and we have an aphorism for that, we have a saying. All of that counts as frozen text. The words never change. Sometimes they contain archaisms. That means words that we don't use anymore, but we're part of English. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this example again later, but to thine own self be true. That's a line from Hamlet, okay? We don't use the, the pronoun thine anymore, but we still say that phrase because it's part of our cultural understanding and all of that, but... <clears throat> Um, we still use it sometimes. The wording is exactly the same every time it's spoken. So examples of that would be the Pledge of Allegiance. Not only do we say the pledge with exactly the same words, we even say it with the same like cadence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Right? You know the way little kids kind of sing it? That's part of that frozen text. It never ever changes. The whole point of the pledge is unity, so we all say it the same. Wedding vows. 
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the sight of God in this congregation to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Right? Okay, how do I know that? I am not an ordained minister, right? But I could, and I could keep going if I wanted to, right? So, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forth? Okay, that is, that's part, that's frozen text. How do I know that? I've been to a lot of weddings. I've watched a lot of rom-coms, <laughs> okay? So, even if, now, not that every wedding looks like that, not that everybody says exactly that, but there is sort of these standard things that we say as part of our culture in a wedding. And so that would be an example. I've heard it so much that I can say it. Uh, Miranda writes, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you can say can and will be held against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. How many times have I been arrested? Zero. But I've watched a lot of, like, you know, top shows in my life. So I can rattle off most of the Miranda rights for you. Because they're always said the same way. Cops want to make sure that, that criminals have an understanding of what their rights are so they read them their Miranda rights. So, quotes from Shakespeare, quotes from the Bible, those, those aphorisms that we say, those expressions, those all examples of frozen text, because you always say it the same way. All right, so that's our first register. Our next one is formal. Formal is somebody getting up in front of a group of people and giving a speech. Okay? It's one-way participation. The speaker talks and everybody else listens. Okay? <clears throat> There's no interruption. Okay, you can't like jump in in the middle and like make a comment, ask a question. You just let them talk. Technical vocabulary or exact definitions are important because somebody can't raise their hand in the middle and go, hey, wait, I don't understand what you're talking about. They need to make sure they're giving all the information that their audience needs to understand them. Okay, a TED Talk is a great example of this because TED Talks are filmed in front of a live audience, right? There's somebody up on the stage and a big group of people in the auditorium. However, you can get just as much information out of that TED Talk online two years later as you can if you were there because you can't jump in and ask him and all of that. So they can record it and other people can enjoy it. Okay, put your computer away, please. Put it away. Put it away. <clears throat> so that examples of this would be somebody giving a speech or presentation like a TED Talk. A sermon in church would be another example. Um, introductions between strangers. If I'm introducing you to somebody new, I'm going to kind of give all that background information, and for the most part, it's kind of rude to jump in there and ask a question. You wait till they're done, and then you go, oh, you're from Minnesota? I, I've spent my summers there growing up, or whatever, right? So that's, so, first one, frozen text. Second one, formal text. Our third one is consultative. Uh, in the video, she sort of said consultative. It's usually pronounced consultative. This is two-way participation. So background information is provided. I don't assume that you know everything. So usually, now this time was a little different because I gave you an assignment already about this. But a lot of times when I start this lesson, I'll say, okay, what can you tell me about language register? And nobody raises their hand. But... If we had a big group of you say, oh, yeah, we learned about that in speech class last year, then I would change how I approach this because I don't need to start from the beginning if most of you have an understanding of how it works, right? But if you don't know, then I need to start at the beginning and make sure you, have, you can grasp all the concept before I go on. <clears throat> Feedback is common and interruptions are allowed, okay? So does that sound familiar? What kind of, what kind of situation does it sound like you'd have this conversation in? Class, how about teachers and students right here, right? Yeah. Feedback is coming. Interruptions are a lot. If you have a question, what do you do? You raise your hand and get called on, right? I want you to ask if you don't understand anything. I want you to answer questions when I ask them, right? If you have a story to share, I want you to share that, as long as it's, you know, mostly relevant. But we need that feedback. I want to be able to ask you questions and have you answer back so I know that you're getting it, right? That is what we're talking about, feedback and interruptions. Okay, and that conversation has to go both ways. There's times where I want you to share the information back to me so I can make sure you understand it. Another example of a consultative would be a doctor and a patient. 
So you walk into the doctor and you say, hey, doc, my knee really hurts. And he goes, really? Okay, well, let's take a look at that. So he asks you all these questions about, you know, does it hurt when you sit? Does it hurt when you stand? Does it only hurt at the end of the day? You know, all the, did you, was there any kind of, did anything happen? Right? And then he kind of mushes on it and moves it around and, okay, does it hurt when I do this? And then at the end, he says, oh, well, here's what happened. And here's how you need to do it. So you need to go to physical therapy. And you're like, is that every day? Or he's like, no, 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 once a week. And you can have that conversation back and forth. A lawyer and his client would be a, a, an example of this as well. An expert and an apprentice. So if you get hired at a new job and the manager starts training you, that would be this kind of relationship. If you have a question about what's going on, he wants you to ask that question so you don't mess up in front of customers later. So that you figure it out now with him and don't try and like flail on the job, right? In a consultative thing, there's usually an imbalance of power. There's usually one person who has more authority than the other. And that doesn't like make them better than you or anything, but that just means as a teacher, I'm in charge, right? That's kind of what that means. So there's usually one person who knows more or has more authority than the other. All right. Frozen is text that never changes. Formal, that's somebody giving a speech that goes one way. Consultative, that's uh, an expert and an apprentice. That's a teacher and a student. That's this back and forth conversation this way. Next we have casual, okay? This is you and your friends in the hallway. This is, you know, sitting around the lunch table. This is your family at dinner. These are your friends and acquaintances ch chatting. You don't have to give all the background information and explain everything when you're talking to your friends, right? Um, ellipsis meaning so you kind of like top tell say half a sentence and then kind of let it hang there. Slang interruptions, all those things are common and acceptable. Okay, so like I said, this is friends in a social setting. This is your family sitting around talking. And our fifth one, this is often misunderstood. A lot of people don't get what this one's all about, but they call it the intimate register. And this is. This is those situations where you're really close with someone and your intonation or the look is more important than your words or your grammar, right? So the person might be saying one thing, but you know very clearly they mean something different. Maybe you've had this situation happen before where your mom's hanging out with one of her friends and all of a sudden she goes, honey, would you go get me a glass of water? Does she really want a glass of water? Is she really thirsty at that moment? No. She wants you gone. She wants you out of the room so she can talk about, you know, something else. Something that she doesn't want you to hear. So you go off to the kitchen and maybe you bring her glass of back, bring her back a glass of water. Maybe you just go turn on the television because you're like, whatever, they're not gonna let me back in. So you go off and do something else. Mom really doesn't, mom's not thirsty, she doesn't want a glass of water, she just wants you gone. And that's just kind of a subtle way for her to do that. And you know, you know it's not about the glass of water, right? And she knows you know. But the point is you leave the room so she can have the conversation she needs to, okay? Or that look where she doesn't have to say anything. She just gives you that look and you're like, ooh, I better behave. I'm in trouble. Okay? That is, that is the intimate register. Inside jokes, those funny stories that you and you have that are funny to you guys that don't make sense to anybody else, that's the intimate register. Where you say something and all your, you know, and some of your friends laugh and everything, and the new kid goes, what? And you're like, mm, it, you know, you had to be there. Okay, that's the intimate register. So you have this with your family members. You have this with close friends. This includes inside jokes. So uh, last week we had a homework assignment where I said, like, don't ask mom because she's frustrated and mad because, like, the house is a mess. Go ask dad because he had a good day at work and was, his presentation was really successful, right? So in that I said, you know, don't ask mom, the house is a mess. Well, <laughs> a couple years ago, one of the students saw that sign and she got the mess confused with confused because the sign confuses actually your thoughts are a mess. And so she's like, the house is confused? Like she knew she, you know, she understood the rest of the sentence but got stuck in that, the house is confused. Anyway, so when we finished the assignment, she's just sitting there staring at me going, what? You know? And then we finished and I kind of, we went through the homework and I voiced it for her and she was like, oh, the house is a mess because the thoughts are confused. Okay, 
Anyway, that became this huge running joke. And that was like at the end of ASL 1. I had her for ASL like 2 and 3 and 4, and it just became this thing about how the house was confused. And she'd draw little pictures of a confused house. And, you know, other kids are like, what are you talking about that confused? Or she'd, when she'd get lost on something, she'd be like, this house is confused. And so then the other kids got in on it. So it just became this like running gag that we had about the confused house. If you weren't there, maybe it wasn't funny. If you weren't there, like when other kids, as she went through the years and other kids joined class, they're like, what are you guys talking about? But it just became our little joke, the confused house. The house is confused. So that was our inside joke that we had. That's part of this intimate register. <clears throat> All right, so here is your homework. And pay attention because this is, it's not hard, you just have to know what to do. Okay, I want you to write a set of three sentences that all communicate the same information but do so in different registers. Okay, and then once you have that set of three, you're going to write two more sets of three. So, for example, go clear back to the beginning, right? And my Joe Biden example. How this would look was, honey, sign this before you go, right? Versus, Mr. President, I'd be honored if you'd give me your autograph. And to the government of the United States of America, the Australian government requests that you, you know, this is going to be really, really formal. All of these are asking the same information, but because one government to another has a different relationship than a citizen to her president, and has, that has a different relationship to, than a wife to her husband, how we ask Joe Biden to sign this paper is going to sound different. Okay? So this is kind of an example of what your homework should look like. All right, let me give you some more. Three sets of sentences, one of them should be a command, like asking somebody to do something, like Joe, sign this card. One set should include frozen text. If it's the same one, okay, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, if possible, quote your source. And then label the register for each sentence, right? So, honey, sign this card, right? That could be casual, that could be intimate, it's probably casual. Right? Sometimes you have one that might be formal, it might be consultative. Right? Without the context of a bigger situation, it just depends. So it, it might have more than one answer. So here's some examples. Please remain seated. That's a command. Right? You're telling somebody to do something. What register is that in? Formal, formal or... Uh, so that is probably formal, right? Like at the end of, you know, the end of a speech or before you get off the airplane or something. Please remain seated. You need to stay in your chair. That's probably consultative, right? It's a teacher, you know, some kid keeps wanting out of a chair. Could you just sit, you know, like the teacher's saying, you need to stay in your chair. What, what if a mom just goes, hold on, it's falling asleep on me. What if a mom just says to a little kid, dessert? That's intimate, right? Because what does she really mean? Sit down and behave yourself or you don't get any dessert, right? So she doesn't have to say, I need you to sit down and behave yourself and or you won't get it. All she has to do is remind that little kid, if you want dessert, I need to see some good behavior. So she just goes, dessert, with that tone in her voice. And then, oh, the kid, okay, yes, I'm going to sit down and behave because I want chocolate cake. Okay? That is intimate register, right? Because mom knows what she means, the kid knows what she means, everybody else might not get it, right? It's her tone that communicated more than her words. But this is an example of a command, right? Because you're asking somebody to do something. That's what this chapter is about. We haven't even got to vocabulary yet, but when we get here, it's going to be about asking people, making requests and chores around the house. So we're going to talk about how do we talk about, you know, your relationship with somebody is going to depend on how you ask them. So that's important to talk about. All right, here's another example. My friend Noreen and I had an interesting night when we camped near a rodeo in South Dakota. What register is that? So it could be consultative. It could be formal. It's because I'm giving you background information, right? I'm kind of starting at the beginning of the story, right? Where we were and what happened. And we driven all day, and we were exhausted, but it was so loud, and we couldn't get any sleep, and then we started giggling. That's probably more casual, right? Because I'm just kind of just chatting about telling the story. 
Remember that night in Kennebec? What register is that? That's intimate, right? Because I can say this to Noreen. I don't have to give this background. Remember that time when you and I were driving across the country and we stopped in Kennebec, South Dakota? And all I have to do is say the word Kennebec, and she's going to remember the rodeo and how loud it was and how tired we were and that we couldn't get any sleep. And then we just started giggling and just laughed half the night because it was just so absurd, right? I mean, true story. But I don't have to tell Noreen this whole story. All I have to do is remind her, remind her the name of that town, and, and um, she's, right, and she, she's there with me. So consultative has background information. Casual is just the story itself. Intimate has that where I don't even have to tell the story. She knows already. All right. So here's an example. This is a command. It's also, it's also uh, frozen, right? An example of frozen text. So I was going to ask, and there I just accidentally clicked, so I showed you. That is from Hamlet, right? He says, to thine own self be true. Hamlet doesn't say that. That Polonius guy does. All right, little little clueless there for you. You with me? Okay. Who? No. Polonius. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Somebody in Shrek is in that. Which movie? The first one where uh, uh, Lord Farquaad asked the guy in like the mask to break the mirror. His name's Polonius. <laughs> uh oh. So Polonius is an old man in Hamlet who's giving advice as the young men head off. So that's frozen text, right? To thine own self, that's not a pronoun we use anymore. That's an archaism. It's an old term, but we still use it because it's in that phrase. Take care of yourself, then you'll be in a position to help others. What register is that in? Oh, it's frozen. Okay, yeah. I, that's the source where I got it from, but... So now it's not frozen, because you can say that other ways. The one where you say it to people, but they can't... Like okay, people, you or say it to people, consulting. but they can't ask, which no. is formal, or it could be consult consultative, because if we, if I'm your English teacher and we're reading Hamlet and I say, okay, what does Polonius mean when he says that, right? It means to thine own self be true, you know, kind of take care of yourself, take care of who you are, and then you're in a position to help other people better. So it's a teacher explaining it. So that's what I mean. It could have more than one answer. So it could be a teacher explaining it to class. It could be somebody lecturing on Hamlet. Keep it real. What register is that? Casual. That's casual. Or possibly intimate, but probably casual. All right, so kind of get how this works? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. There are more. There's a couple more. So like I said, I wanted, some people get this, some people don't. So I wanted lots of examples. I wanted to check on you because I care about you. That would be consultative, right? That would be like... Your teacher calling you because you've been gone a couple of days, or your guidance counselor, or you know the crisis counselor saying, "Hey, I know you've been dealing with stuff. We haven't heard from you. Are you okay?" I love you guys. You're hilarious. Casual. That's going to be casual. I love you, sweetheart. Intimate. That's going to be intimate. So intimate can involve sort of that romantic sort of stuff, but that's not all it is. And sometimes when you read about registers, they, they, that's all people think intimate is. But that's just one layer out of the whole thing of intimate register. All right, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Frozen. 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 How do you know it's frozen? It's from, the Bible. it's from the Bible, right? It's got this old-fashioned word in it, Sabbath, unless you have studied the Bible or are Jewish, you might not know what the word Sabbath is. I'm sorry? Kids in So get yourself to Sunday meeting. So that's casual or intimate. And then set aside one day a week to rest and reflect, which is what that means, right? Uh -huh. So to keep the Sabbath day, one day of rest, one day to go to church to reflect on, or, or just, to, just to not work, right? Just to take a little break. So that would be formal or consultative. So whether that's a pastor, like, preaching on the Ten Commandments and explaining to you what that means, or consultative, just saying, well, you know what? Part of your problem, part of the reason you're so stressed out is because you're not taking enough time to just relax. So take some time one day a week to, or whatever, to just kind of do something different. It's good advice, religious or not. Okay. But <laughs> so that's just, there's one ex another example for you. Okay, last one. Oh, I gave it away. Tell Chris, hey. Okay. 
hey is pretty casual, right? Calling him by his first name, pretty casual. Tell Mr. Jones I said hello. Now what register are we in? Formal. Formal or consultative, right? If he's a teacher or if he's like my friend's parent, my friend's dad, I might be a little more formal. Mr. Jones. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That's formal, right? Because it's somebody, it's somebody from the podium talking to a big group of people, and they don't know that Chris Jones is sitting in the audience. There's a ton of people there, so he just addresses everybody in general. Okay? But they're all greeting Chris Jones. Right? Okay, that's register. Who you are, there's my sources, okay. Who you are, where you are, and your relationship with the other people there is going to dictate how you address them. That's what register is all about, okay? All right, so get working on your homework. And happy signing.